So here we have a Wii U and a bunch of Wii U games that I'm going to take to one of my local game stores now. I saved a couple of games on the system, you know, in case for whatever reason I want to play them again. But, you know, this is all stuff, you know, that it's been ported to the Nintendo Switch or it's been ported to other systems. I never play the Wii U. I think it's a cool system. It's just, it's not for me right now. And I don't want a giant collection of video games. If I have to move, I don't want to have to lug this stuff around. I just want the stuff that I'm really going to play. Um, and this isn't stuff I feel like listing online. So this is some stuff. We're just going to see what we get. And if we get a good deal, we'll continue to do business with the game stores. But if we don't, yeah, I don't know. It might be the end. It might be the end and might move forward with eBay. But yeah, that's what I got. So let's see what we get. Okay, so I didn't do that well on the Wii U stuff. I got like 50 bucks and uh, the star of the day, Bonk's Adventure. Uh, this is a game that I actually have on the PC Engine. Love this game. For a platformer, love this game. I actually played Bonk's Adventure on a Turbo as a kid. Now, my babysitter growing up, she would go over her boyfriend's house, and of course she had to bring me with her, right? She was supposed to be babysitting me, but she'd make out with her boyfriend, and he had a Turbo, and I remember just playing this for hours as a kid. And then I watched this movie called Bear, where this bear ate mushrooms and tripped. It was a real weird 80s movie, but yeah, Bonk's Adventure. So yeah, not totally disappointed with my trade, but yeah, at least I got Bonk's Adventure. So after that last trade at the game store, I kind of decided I'm going to do everything on eBay. I uh, used to sell a lot of stuff on eBay. I got an eBay account that's you know around 10 years old and it's in pretty good standing. So, you know, if you want to, I guess not help support me, but you know, buy some of my stuff that I want to, you know, I want to declutter. I got way too many video games and I only want to keep certain ones. Um, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, might be from my eBay page or one of my listings, but just go under that listing and then look for everything that I got. And you know, you might find something that you want. But um, I will still go to the flea market. Uh, the flea market is a place that I've got a lot of good games recently. And the reason that I will continue to go to the flea market is because I can take, you know, good games like this. This is just an example, but I can take games like this and turn them into, these are all games that I found recently, like Twinkle Star Sprays, Border Down, um, Shikigami no Shiro 2, uh, Gunstar Heroes on the PS2. Um, you know, I find stuff like that at the flea market. So why would I not continue to do business there? Um, but... You know, one thing that I am going to do, and, uh, oh, Atelier, yeah, I, I recently, you know, like my Atelier games on the PS3, you know, all those are getting ported to the Switch, and, you know, I only wanted to keep my 2D, uh, you know, PS2 games, um, I actually have had these, I got this recently, um, you know, 30 bucks, you know, Atelier Iris 3, so... Yeah, I really enjoyed these on the PS2. At least the first two, I'm going to play that. But, you know, I'm going to list stuff like, um, not that. I'm going to list stuff like, you know, some of this Genesis stuff, like the Fantasy Stars. Like, I have collections of those and, you know, ROMs of those and stuff like that. You know, some of this Carpe stuff, you know, not any of those shooters right there. But, you know, some of that stuff I'm going to list. So, you know, I'm going to have a, a decent amount of stuff on eBay. So, you know, check out my, you know, my eBay page. And I'm going to try to go, um, you know right with or if not below you know what a s item is selling for you know that way if any of you guys you know do consider going over there um you, you do get a decent deal um so yeah you know check it out if you want and you know if not it's all good homie but uh one thing i want to talk about is you know radical rick uh radical rick's back you know i was one of those people that um, you know, I listened to all his content, you know, when he was uh, in his heyday, you know, I wasn't there for the very beginning when he said he was doing like his, uh, you know, Walking Dead videos. Um, although if I had heard him back then, um, cause I was a huge fan, I don't really watch the show much anymore, but when the show first came out, um, you know, I was a big Walking Dead fan. Uh, I remember it came out, I think I saw the first episode, um, I think it was on a Halloween night and it was just a night that didn't have any plans or anywhere to go. So I watched Walking Dead. And, you know, I was hooked. It was very, uh, very addictive show. Um, so if I had heard his content, you know, I would have made a connection there. But, uh, you know, he is back. Um, he's not as uh, abrasive, I, I guess you should say. Now, you know, he just, I think that he just doesn't want to pigeonhole himself and limit himself to, you know, things like gaming YouTubers. Um, you know, I would want to be known for, you know, something much more than that. Um, especially if somebody as gifted, you know, as himself, you know, that can... You know, the man, I feel like he was made to, you know, be in front of an audience, you know, he just has a way of connecting with an audience, and, you know, that's one thing I've, uh, you know, definitely come to appreciate, you know, in his channel, um, you know, I've been friendly with him, um, you know, for, you know, for a little while now, a few months now, and, um, you know, he's a good guy, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that he's back, it seems like he's got, like, a little side channel, I, I think that's about, 
you know, him not wanting to, you know, not lose his audience, you know, due to, he's got another channel, like his 5,000 subscriber channel, I think has two copyright strikes and he knows if he gets, I guess if he gets one more, it gets taken down and he wants a backup channel. I get, I get that. I'd probably do the same thing if I was him. Um, you know, plus a, a 5,000 channel, I'm sure he gets some kind of ad revenue off that. You know, I'm, I'm a monetized channel, you know, I would want ad revenue off that too. You know, my thing is this with the whole like ad revenue thing and, you know, advertisers like in 2020, if something happens, you know, if something happens, let's just say, for example, you know, you're walking outside and, you know, Jesus decides it's a, a random day. He decides to ascend from heaven. And, you know, don't you want to be there with your cell phone to get a video of that? You know, I know I do. I want to get a video of that because I want to post it online and get paid off of it. You know, why would you not? You know, you might call it a moral, might call it unethical. I come from the street, you know, I come from the street where, you know, it was all about how are we going to duck the police and what was, what are we going to do for our next caper? You know, that's where I come from. But, you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a good boy now. I don't uh, dwell on the negative and use my powers for good, you know, these days, but you know, that's where I came from. So that's where my mind's at sometimes. And, you know, if I can get a nice viral video going, you know, the funny thing about that, you know, viral videos, I got a video, it was one of my first videos, I used to take videos of, you know, drug addicts on the streets of Baltimore, and I think one of my videos is, you know, Baltimore man flipping out on drugs, but um, I got one video, it was like a, you know, a hooker passed out in car or something, I had to word it something else because YouTube didn't like the way I had the title worded, but um, I had a boss, or uh, that was a landlord that I had, we rented a, a business that I worked at or something, but um this, uh, this hooker is in a car, and she was, I guess, high on heroin, and, uh, you know, she passed out, and we opened the door to this guy's car, and she, like, wakes up, she's like, <gasps> and then, you know, she's, like, flicking us off, and, you know, we're like, we're gonna call the police, and, you know, it's just kind of a funny video, it's really, it's really stupid, you know, it's really a stupid video, I'm sure if you go watch it, and then you probably come back here and be like, oh, John, that's just, that's just distasteful, it's disgraceful, it's stupid, why would you post that, I don't know. Because I used to take videos of stuff like that. But anyway, that thing's got like over half a million views. Might be, I don't know, somewhere like three quarters of a million views. And I actually have it monetized now. I've never seen money from it. But <laughs> it's it, they didn't let me monetize it for the longest time. You know, even after I had a channel that was able to, to monetize, they wouldn't. That's when I changed the title name because I started noticing the traffic that video was getting. And uh, they still, it's monetized now. When I check it, it's got the green, you know, check mark next to it. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't do this for the money. I've yet to get, you know, paid from YouTube. I, I do believe I have an AdSense account that, you know, is, uh, probably has money sitting in it. But I'll, I'll check it one day, you know, if I need some money, you know. Or maybe it electronically transfers over. I don't know. You know, I don't know. But again, if I find that nice viral video out there, you know, I want to have the nice channel. I can throw it on. You know, even though I got the gaming channel, you know, everyone can come here and you know, if they're into video games, they can stay, you know, if not, they can go. But if you get paid from a video with high traffic, wouldn't you want to? I know I would. Call it whatever you want, but that's just, that's where my mind's at. But anyway, you know, Rick's back and, you know, again, he's not as uh, abrasive as he uh, once was towards, you know, gaming YouTubers, you know, MJR crew and, you know, stuff like that. But let me say this, let me say this with that. You know, I, I felt really strongly about some of the behavior that was going on this platform for quite some time. And, uh, you know, even uh, f uh, friends of mine, that are fellow YouTubers, would, you know, talk to me about it. And I used to think when they would bring things like that up to me, when I first kind of came around here, that I was like, God, why is this person like such a hater? You know, let people just be in their own lane. But, I, you know, when I started to see some of the behavior that was going on, it's like, my God, you know, these grown adults are running these scams and... You know, I really started to see, you know, what, what people are doing. And those certainly aren't the type of people that I want to be associated with. Um, you know, let me because let me just lay it down for you. I don't like the scams. I don't like the Patreon. I don't like any of it. You know, I don't see how a grown man could, you know, have a virtual tip cup out um, and, and hustle credit card. Because that's all Patreon is. It's a fucking, it's a credit card hustle, you know. Um, I don't see why. Uh, it's like, a, it's disgusting. And. You know, I get it. There's people that use it responsibly. I'm going to give you an example of that. So I'm not totally against Patreon. Um, but, you, you know, when you use it and you, you have something happen, something happens on your channel, something happens in your life, oh, my God, and you pin a fucking Patreon link to that video, like, I'm sorry. You, that, that That's disgusting. You know, I don't care what happens. 
you know, it would have to be something really, really bad, you know, but that's what GoFundMe, if something that bad happened in your life, somebody else would do a GoFundMe for you, you know, your local community would probably do a GoFundMe for you and get you your money, you know, it, it would be bad, you know, it wouldn't be good, but they do it, you know, they do it, but, so let me just say that, you know, the Patreon, but again, you know, there's people out there that do it right, you know, in my opinion, I'm going to give you an example, Mad Little Pixel, I think he has a, a good YouTube channel, you know, he, he gets products sent to him. He reviews products. Some of them he buys. You know, he's very honest about that. I do believe that the money comes in from the Patreon, goes into his channel because you see him talk about so many things and it's products that I consider buying. So I watch videos like Mad Little Pixels and he goes into all the details about anything I would want, whether it's compatible with, uh, you know, imports or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, he answers all the questions. He tinkers around and he's smart and he knows what he's doing. So... You know, he makes decisions for me about whether or not I'm going to buy certain products. If something's not worth it, you know, maybe I'll wait for a newer revision of a newer product, you know. And um, I feel like he's very honest and I feel like the, uh, you know, knowledge I, I get from his channel is a, is a product. So I could see a Patreon um, with, with someone like him. But that's very rare. You know, so does every gaming YouTuber do this and, and treat his, their channel like his? No, you know, no, they don't. You know, me, a, you know, a 40 some odd year old man in, in the basement talking about video games is, uh, that, that's not a job and it's nothing that you should look at as for a consistent income. I just, I just think that it's crazy that a grown man would, uh, look at something like that, um, you know, as a job, but you know, to each their own, you know, I'm not here to make enemies. It is something to talk about though. And it is very interesting. It's something that communities have sprung up, uh, talking about things like this and, they are pretty, uh, pretty cool little communities, and um, you know they grow by different names these days. But you know, if you get a communities like that, you'll probably meet some of the realest people that you will meet on the internet. You know, I know I have, but well, you know. So, do we need another Evercade video? Do we need another Evercade video? I just watched the Metal Jesus Evercade video, right? They, you know, the YouTubers have been making videos about this over the last couple weeks, and. I feel like the company, this Evercade company, they're doing it smart. You know, they're sending some of the big YouTubers, you know, the product, like, like, what, like a month or two before it actually, um, you know, comes out to the public. Um, you know, they'll build up the demand and sell their product. And, um, you know, especially to like, you know, things like the, you know, the people here from the anti-e-bagging community, you know, the people here for pretty much from, from all of YouTube. You got to look at something like a channel like Metal Jesus is, okay? You know, a company is sending, you know, his brand pretty much a product. And he, the video was good. It was very informative. You know, answered a lot of questions. Um, there was things that he noticed that were uh, with the product. And, he, he, you know, it seems like he communicated with the company, had the questions answered. I feel like it was a good video. I'm sure the company got, um, you know, bang for their buck as far as sending him, you know, the, the system and the games and stuff like that. But, you know, the only thing I would wonder is, you know, I wonder how much they paid him, you know, um, was there money involved? You know, it's none of my business, you know, it shouldn't be any of your business either. But, uh, you know, that's the only thing that I would ever see is if you wanted to like pick something completely apart, you know, I would argue the ethics of, you know, like if I had a gaming channel as successful as his, you know, would I, would I hold a product, uh, you know, under a paywall until they, a company reaches a certain amount. And you know, that's the only thing that I could ever consider, you know, that controversial, you know, as far as that video is concerned, if I was to pick it apart, you know, if I was to do a, a deep dive, um, you know, as far as the situation goes, but, you know, I'm not a psycho, and again, you know, I don't really, <laughs> don't really care that much, but, um, you know, because I feel like, and the reason I, I say that is because I do feel like there's a lot of YouTubers out there that have been pretty, you know, picked apart, and, you know, some of them, you know, I don't feel like they're that bad. You know, some of them, you know, even if they look at what they do as, as, a, as a job and do it for a living, you know, whatever, you know, it doesn't really bother me. You know, I just don't like the scams in the, the Patreon and, you know, the e-begging. You know, I feel like as long as you cannot, you know, not go that, that road, you know, got, you know, stay away from that, uh, that element, you know, you're good to go. You're not going to get any complaints from me, but, you know, don't be, you know, one of those, uh, you know, one of those offenders and, you know, come here. Uh, you know, and expect me to be friendly with you because I'm not, you know, I'm not, and I'm just like I wouldn't be if we were hanging out on the street, you know, the only way we'd be really friendly with one another is if we were forced to feel like a work situation or something like that, but, you know, that's not really anything that ever 
presented itself to be a problem on this channel. All you guys that come here uh, and we interact, you know, we all have a good time. And I am enjoying, you know, talking about, you know, things that are going on on YouTube, maybe some of the stuff going on in my life, you know, with you guys. Um, you know, some of the controversial stuff, is it's fun to talk about, you know, it's, uh, you know, I kind of work, I kind of think of it like this. My girlfriend, she likes a show called uh, 90 Day Fiance, and uh, it's actually, she had me hooked on the show, right? It's, uh, you know, people that, you know, they meet uh, someone from another country, and they have 90 days, 90 days to figure out if they're going to, I guess, get married, and if she's going to stay in the country, or he's going to stay in whatever country, you know, you get, you get the drift, right? So... It's really addictive, and, you know, another show like that is uh, Love After Lockup, where, you know, a person meets someone in jail, they get in a relationship, they usually agree to, you know, be wed as soon as the partner gets released from prison, jail, and you know, stuff like that, right? And it's, like, always, like, these, like, ghetto thugs and, like, the girl, it's just girls that, they, they want that drama in their life, but, you know, sometimes it's, you know, the other way around, but it is really, really interesting to watch, and, uh, you know, it's, it's addictive, but, you know, that type of entertainment reminds me of you know some of the the drama that takes place on on youtube and i see why uh, grown adults like myself could feed into it you know because it's that same sense of uh, it's that same sense of entertainment that my girlfriend gets when she watches that show love after lockup so um you know i get it everyone gets you know their form of entertainment from through a different medium or you know you know my uh you know, my significant other i know she reads a lot so that's something i used to do a lot of i actually got a I got the sequel to, uh, I watched that show, The Tribe, every every season and show that The Tribe put out, and I got a book called uh, The New Dawn, The Tribe, The New Dawn, which is uh, supposed to tell the story about what happens after the technos, and I guess after they sailed off from, you know, whatever whatever land they were at the, the last episode of the show, so I'm going to try to take a little bit of time and actually read that book, and I'll maybe I'll do a review on it. You know, the, the first Rebel Gaming Club video that I ever saw uh, Dan was talking about a show called The Tribe, right? And I was like, that sounds like an interesting show. So I looked into it and I watched it. It was all free to watch on YouTube. That was the great thing about that show, right? So I looked into it. I watched like the first two episodes at work at the time I had a t-shirt shop and I got hooked on The Tribe. So then after that, I started watching The Rebel, the Rebel Gaming Club, right? And, uh, you know, Dan's got a, um, a pretty cool channel. I'm trying to see if he wants any of these video games I got. Um, but I, he wants uh, PS3 and PS4. Uh, you know JRPGs. I just got rid of some on the PS3. I do have a couple. I got a couple. I got uh Dan, if you're watching this, buddy. I got I got a here we go. We got a Fairy Fencer F uh, collector's edition on the PS3. Um, I got a couple more in the closet back there. I got a uh, I guess Cyber Dimension Neptunia uh, collector's edition, but um. Yeah, I got a few floating around there, but I'll see. I'll see what I can find. I'll see what I got. I got some stuff in the closet. I got a bunch of boxes I got to go through. And, um, you know, my local flea market has quite a few uh, JRPGs, the collector's editions anyway, on the PS3 uh, and the Vita. I might grab some of those Vita ones now that I think about it. But they don't want a lot of money for them. I mean, uh, they told me like five and ten bucks a clip. So if I can go in there wanting a lot of them where it's just missing the game, you know, get the collector's edition. And then go out and find the game later. Or maybe you need it complete. I don't know. I was thinking about grabbing a few of them. You know, even if I go out and hunt for the game, reunite it with the collector's edition, and then list it online. You know, I don't know. That's, that's something to think about. You know, don't any of you guys snake me for my idea. I'll show, I'll show that guy this video. and be like, I was there first, right? <laughs> but anyway, I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Um, you know. Not really a whole lot happened this week in gaming, but, you know, there's always something to talk about. You know, somebody's doing something, or maybe you got a cool game. You know, if you got something awesome, definitely tell me about it, you know, in the comments down below. And as far as the Evercade goes, um, the, the Metal Jesus video, I thought it was actually a pretty good video. Um, you know, I watched the RGT85 video, and, uh, you know, I thought the Metal Jesus' video was a, a little bit better um, as far Would I get the Evercade now? Well, there was a Genesis port, or a port of Phileas on there. Um, Coffee Crisis was on there. Like Pico Interactive Games. Mega Cat Studios. Yeah, the Namco stuff, the Atari stuff. I just, I don't know that Evercade. Maybe. I think it's like 100 bucks, and it comes with a few of those cartridges. Ah, man. See, I got like a GPDXD. I got 
I don't know. I don't think I need another system like that. I don't feel like I want the, the Evercade. I do feel like I do want the Polymega, you know, or the Retro Blocks or whatever they're going to call that. I guess it's Polymega. I do want the Polymega when that comes out. So maybe I'll take my eBay money and roll that into a Polymega. But if I get a Polymega and that thing is the shit, I mean, I might even get rid of my, you know, PC Engine Duo R. I might get rid of my... Um, you know, a couple of my, you know, retro systems, my Japanese retro systems, um, if the Polymega can, you know, handle everything that I throw at it, because, uh, you know, I want to move forward with, I don't need, I don't need the, the massive collection, I really am just about all the games, um, you know, if I can keep all the games and play them all in one system, you know, the Sega CD stuff, I got some, I got some Sega CD and some Saturn games that, I, you know, I'm going to list on eBay, um, none of the, none of the crazy stuff, but, you know, some of the more common games, um, you know, if I could take one system and, you know, play them all, all the games from different systems on one system, you know, that'd be the way to go. So, you know, might get rid of the Sega CD, you know, some of the stuff like that. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I just know the Sega CDs, they sell for, what, like 100 bucks, 120 bucks, something like that. And, you know, if I can roll that into a Polymega, they're like 300. That's, you know, the Duo R and the Sega CD, bam. Then we got, a, you know, something that can play everything. So, I don't know, something to think about. Anyway, again, I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Till next time, guys. Peace out.